Welcome back to our binocular review series, folks. And in this video, we're looking at the best binoculars under $1,000. We just touched on the $500 price bracket, so go check out that video. In this one, we're looking at $1,000 and under. So we are gonna go through the pros and cons of each of these for you. Some of the highlights from our huge binocular review where we uh, tested 26 of these binoculars side by side on the tripod. 10 volunteers testing and ranking with a weighted score. So that's that review is over on the website, backwardspursuit.com. Go check that out. Check out our website and uh, our social media accounts. I'll put links to all that down in the description. But let's dive into these, these binoculars right here. We're gonna go over the pros and cons of these for you. Let's get started. So first up, let's look down on this end. And these two here, the Tractoric and the Sig, uh, Sig Sauer Zulu 7s, they were, we put them in the $1,000 category, but really they were more like $700 category. We just had the two of them here to compare. Uh, so we've got them listed in here in the order that they ranked from our huge review and what our, our weighted averages were and weighted rankings. So first up here, let's look at the Sig Sauer Zulu 7s. These are a 10, of course, these are all 10 by 42, just, um, so you so you know they're all equal that way. Um, the, the Zulu 7s here from Six Hour, really nice pair of binoculars, really a nice image, and their focus mechanism is real nice and smooth. They're a little different in their designs, more tactile, uh, military, if you want to call it that. Open bridge design, which is not normal for uh, these types or this this price bracket. There's only a couple here that, that have that feature, so makes for a really comfortable uh, viewing and a comfortable holding. Uh, edge to edge clarity was okay with the Zulu 7s. Uh, I would say 30, 35% uh, the outer edges, uh, maybe you know, 35, 40. You started losing some clarity as you went to the outside of that. The, the center of the image clarity was very good though with these and low light performance was good but not great. Um, but they, they hung in there really well even in this $1,000 price category. Really nice pair of binoculars. I really liked the eye cups. Um, they, they were real comfortable for me, and a lot of folks did think that as well in our review. Uh, you got a lot of eye relief here, which is real nice. And the eye cups could use a little more resistance, and there's a little bit of play in there. Uh, but they're, you know, they seem like they're pretty good eye cups, and they should, should uh, stand up well for you. Diopter here is not locking, unfortunately. That's one thing I wish that they did have. And the, the hinge here is a little bit on the loose side, so you can, that'll move on to you potentially in your binocular harness. Uh, but real solid rubber armor. I really like the way that they feel in your hand and they're nice and lightweight and compact. They were really good performers uh, again, but they're you know, asking a lot to have them compete in the $1,000 category, but they did a really good job. Next up, the Tract Toric UHD. These were one of the surprises in this group and they actually, they actually ranked in, in, among these uh, over here in the mid-range category, even though they were uh, much less expensive than a lot of these other ones in the the $1,000 category. Eye cups are really solid. They give you multiple eye cl uh, multiple clicks there. Uh, they're, they could again use a little bit more resistance so they don't move on you, but they're they're pretty solid that way. Uh, the, the focus mechanism is nice and smooth on these as well. Could be a little bit more resistance in the hinge, uh, but not too bad that way. They're a little bit more than the SIG, but less than some of the others here. Optically, they're really, really good. Uh, again, edge to edge clarity is just okay on these. You get about 30%, the out of 30%, you start losing some of your clarity. Not to be unexpected with the binocular in this price category, just because the edge edge clarity is, is pretty tough. So these did a really good job though overall. They really did well in low light as well. Uh, the way that the, the shot glass that they use here does really well in low light. The rubber armor is really, really good. Uh, I like the way that these feel in hand as well, and they're comfortable in your eyes. Uh, when you put them up your face. I did notice a little bit of eye strain with these more so than the SIG. Uh, so maybe that was just my particular eyes. Some people didn't notice that at all. Uh, so obviously one pair of eyes to the next is gonna vary, but but did really like the track Tauric binoculars. Uh, next up, the Maven B1s. The hinge is real nice and tight. It's not gonna move on you. They're a little bigger, as you can tell, a little bulkier than others here in this group. Not too bad, but they're on the heavy side as well. Eye cups are really nice. really like the way that, the, that these move and function. They could have a little more resistance again. Seems like the theme with most of these is eye cups uh, across the board in all binoculars for whatever reason. 
but they're a little bit looser than I would like. They could move on you, but not too bad. Um, you don't have a locking diopter, unfortunately, with the Maven B1s. That's kind of a bummer. And a lot like their spotting scope, uh, they're, they've got that same uh, uh, the tactile feel here on the focus mechanism. It's real nice and tight that way, not going to move on you. Um, really, the, the, the center of the image on these did really, really well, but they, the edge-edge clarity was a little disappointing in the, the B1s here. Not nearly as good as some of the others. So I lost their edge edge clarity more significantly and a lot faster than some of the others in this price category. So that was a little bit of a bummer, but they do well in low light and the color contrast and color images uh, that you get from these B1s is really, really good as well. Overall, they ranked right here. Uh, it was, this is the number seven spot in our $1,000 category. So not, not bad, but not great. A couple of small changes would, would really bump these up. And I know Maven just came out with a new B1.2, I believe. So hopefully we can get, get that tested and see what changed with the B1.2s. But at any rate, these were a nice pair of binoculars. Really one thing for me though, is the, the eye cups were a little bit uncomfortable and I had a little bit more eye strain than some of the others. And I really noticed that and trying to get, get them to focus and whatnot. So uh, for me, they, they, my eyes didn't love them. You know, sometimes that's just the case. You gotta try them out for yourself and your eyes will love them or they won't. Uh, so that was the experience with, with us and our testing group and the rankings. Uh, next up, the Leupold BX5 Santium HDs. These again were no, real nice pair of binoculars from Leupold. Uh, focus mechanism is really nice. Uh, not any play in there and it's not spongy. Really good that way. The dual hinge design again, I like that. It makes it more comfortable and it's stiff enough. It's not going to move on you. Um, unfortunately, you don't have a locking diopter with these. I wish they did, of course, there. And then eye cups, the three position eye cups here are, are nice and tight. There's a little bit of play in there, but not bad at all. And they lock pretty nicely. One thing about the eye cups on the, the Leupold BX5s here that most of our testers noted was that they're, they're a little bit too thick around the edges here. And what that means or how that plays out is that you've got to have them uh, put all the way down so that you can get them close enough to your face to see a full field of view. Because if they're put out like that, at least for me and a bunch of other folks, you we just really couldn't even use them that way because you had maybe the inner 50% of the field of view. The rest of it was just blacked out. So it had to be run all the way in. So that was kind of a bummer on those. Thinner eye cups would, would really make a huge difference. Now, similar to the ProGuide BX4s, these were good during daylight hours, but really came alive in the low light. So the coatings that Leupold puts on here does a really good job of performing in low light, something you want in a, a hunting binocular. Like the Pro Guides, you've got the binocular thread threading for an adapter here on the end of the second hinge. Not the ideal position for an adapter because you know out on the end here it allows for more movement there and not quite as stable. But you know that's kind of the, the trade-off you have with the, the, the comfort of a dual hinge design. An open bridge like this, it's more comfortable to hold, but then that adapter has to go uh, not in the center where you know, like a lot of these have that. So anyway, so that is the Leupold BX5 Santium HDs and real nice binoculars. A couple of small changes have really, I think, bumped these up in the rankings even higher. Next up, we've got the Leica Trinavid HDs, and these were a real nice pair of binoculars as well. They ran the number five spot here for us after our weighted rankings came into play. And just for a couple of reasons, the image, or I'm sorry, the, the color rendition you get with these is phenomenal. Some of the best in the group, as you would expect with Leica, they're known for that. Um, one of the bummers about the Leica here is that you don't have a locking diopter and it's just far too loose. It's going to move on you uh, in and out of your binocular harness. Uh, so it's kind of, that was kind of a bummer. I wish that would either locked or would have a lot more resistance so it didn't move on you. Um, the, the hinge is nice and tight, which is, helps it not to move uh, so that you get the, the distance, interpupillary distance there right and it stays there. Uh, the focus mechanism is nice and smooth, but there is a little bit of play in there and it's a little bit mushy. I was a little disappointed by that, um, but you know, not too bad. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not anything you could work around, but was wishing for a little bit more out of that. Edge to edge clarity on the, the Trinidad's here was okay. It wasn't the best in the group for sure. It was kind of right in the mid range. And all those details again are on the website. We've got all the weighted rankings. You can go download that worksheet and see where everybody ranked each of these and where they ranked in their weighted scores. Uh, so that's all in the website. I'll put a link to that in the description as well here. 
but the, the edge edge clarity was just okay and there was a little more eye strain with these than some of the others uh, a few folks noted that during our review as well and our testing uh, eye cups here you got a lot of nice eye relief and one thing about the Leica eye cups is that they they lock into place really well they're almost kind of gritty and and don't like to move which is a good thing because you set your eye cups where you want them and they stay there really like that about the the Leica binoculars here and the eye cups that they put together so one of the other bummers on the Trinovids was that you don't have any uh, any tripod adaptability it's not threaded for a stud so if you're going to uh, use these on an adapter you have to get something like the the really right stuff cinch something like that that holds on the on the end there or one of the strap styles there's a couple options for you that way but i wish it was threaded for a stud because that's my favorite style of binocular adapter so uh, something to keep in mind there but kind of right in the middle of the pack here if you if color rendition is really at the top of your list of what you want then definitely take a look at these next up the Miopto pro air again another open open hinge design dual hinge these ones are new here from Miopto, and i wasn't really sure what to expect here um, and these are run right at the thousand dollar price point but man these were really really impressive uh, just a really well built pair of binoculars loved the eye cups probably my favorite eye cups in this whole group they stay in place they're nice and they're crisp uh, it's not very often i say i love some eye cups eye cups here but these Miopto's are do a fantastic job that way focus mechanism was again probably one of my favorites of the group here a uh, diopter is not locking but you have a a, a click style here so it's kind of unique it's right on the the outside right here you got the focus mechanism and then here on the outside you have the diopter adjustment um not my favorite location you could accidentally bump that but you know it's not it's something you'll work around you kind of get used to and you can hear it clicking if you are moving it accidentally so not too bad that way like the others you got the the tripod thread right here on the outside the second the second hinge so it's not as stable there don't like that so much um, but the edge to edge clarity on these was fantastic right tied for the number one spot in edge to edge clarity overall image clarity fantastic some ranked them num these number one uh, a few folks ranked them you know two and three and whatnot but they were absolutely fantastic they did a really really good job the Miopta um, Mio, Mio Pro Airs uh, so next up we've got the, the Vortex Razor HDs a long time favorite of a lot of folks uh, good nice lightweight binocular really compact uh, you do have a locking diopter and so that is really nice as well like I mentioned in the other video the focus wheel here has that glued on piece of rubber here which I'm not a fan of it came off on me once not a huge fan of that um, but the 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 a number of people um, uh, mentioned with the Vortex Razor HDs is they do everything really well. Nothing like amazingly fantastic, but everything pretty well. Edge to edge clarity is pretty good. Not amazing, but, but good. Overall image clarity is very good, but not amazing compared to some of the others here. Um, you know, focus wheel adjustment is really nice and smooth. Uh, not, not a ton of resistance there, but they do a really good job there. Eye cups, not a huge fan of the eye cups here on these. They're too loose. Uh, they move on you too easily and they're real thin so they're not as comfortable that way uh, they can kind of wear on the insides of your eye sockets uh, the hinge is real nice and tight as well so it's not going to move on you uh, low light performance was good again uh, near the top mid mid to top uh, not not among the top but but very good that way so they did a really good job that way moving up to the number two spot this was another surprise for us the gpo passion hds they are as you can see bigger than some of the other ones here but they just flat out performed optically edge edge clarity was good uh, not as good as as the number one spot here uh, the Miopta Mio Pros or the Zeiss Conquest but they were very very good overall image clarity they took the top spot there uh, with the uh, with the rankings across the groups which was a really big surprise to me they were just really fantastic as far as image clarity low light performance if they performed better in low light than they did even though they were number two or three if I remember correctly but they weren't quite as good as some of the others if they would have taken a better uh, gotten a better ranking a better scoring with low light performance they would have taken that top spot hands down because they only didn't take the top spot by uh, less than 0.2 points as far as the the weighted averages and weighted scores so really fantastic pair of binoculars the focus mechanism is really really nice eye cups again some of my favorite eye cups right there with the Miopta's three position click stop but they're really solid they're not going to move on you really comfortable in hand they're a little bigger but they're comfortable in your hand because of that so really really liked that a little bit of chromatic aberration with these but not too bad a little bit more than say the Miopta's um, but 
you know, they were really a really good performing binocular, really good value there for the Miopta, I'm sorry, the uh, G GPO Passion HD. Now for the top ranking binocular, the Zeiss Conquest HD. These were just fantastic, really a bright image. Some of the clearest uh, in the group here. Edge to edge clarity was tied for the number one ranking with the Mioptas. Um, the focus mechanism is really nice and smooth. Really no play to speak of there, not spongy. Uh, one of the things I did not like about these was the eye cups again. Um, they, are, they stay in place really, really nice, but there's just not a lot of eye relief. So what you end up having to do is kind of hold them away from your face a little bit, more so than if you're someone who likes to suck them into your eye cups to kind of shade sun or whatnot. You're not going to like those as much. Another thing I didn't care for on these is no locking diopter, and there's, there's enough resistance there, but it could move on you a little bit. It's not quite as much as I would like. If you're not going to have a locking diopter, it needs to be more have more resistance than that. Otherwise, low light performance, fantastic. Edge to edge clarity, really good. Color rendition, fantastic on these. Almost like a crystally kind of a look with through the Zeiss, and they just did amazing across the board. Uh, easily, not e well, not easily. They they took the top spot just by a little bit over the GPO. But they were just a fantastic binocular, really nice rubber armor, compact and lightweight as well. So really an awesome binocular there from the Zeiss, from Zeiss, the Conquest HD. So that is a quick rundown of each of these. Again, more details on all these down in the description. I'll put a link to the, to the big review that we did with these. Link to that down in the description where we go into more details on all of these. And again, links to all these down in the description for you if you want to check any of them out for yourself. Thanks for joining us here today. Make sure you're subscribed so you can check out our next video on the $1,500 category. We break those ones down and go over pros and cons of those videos. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.